The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 52. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Thank you for joining us on the EL. Today is our third interview with Mike Michalowicz of Profit First, his latest book. Welcome, Mike. And thank you for joining us for the third time on the Entrepreneur's Library. It's like a hat trick going on here. Yes. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're continuing on with, uh, with Mike Michalowicz week, and we're going to end uh, on, on a good note with your newest book, Profit First. Um, but before we do that, will you again, for those that maybe don't know or haven't listened to the previous two episodes, will you introduce yourself and just tell us a little bit about you personally? Sure, sure. So my name is Mike Michalowicz. I'm an author of business books targeted really at small businesses, uh, five million or less in revenue. I even though attracts some other readers too, but early stage businesses and how do you grow them to be successful, to be competitive in your market, to break free of the check by check routine, to break free of competition. And uh, how I do is I challenge all the beliefs that are out there about growing a business and uh, study other businesses. And, and I've had the good fortune of growing my own too. So from my own experiences, but also studying many, many other entrepreneurs, what is the current formula for success? And that's what I write about. Thank you for sharing that. Now let's jump right into your newest book, Profit First, which was just made available for purchase on July 8th, 2014. And Mike, we're going to move fairly quick, but here are the top questions that our listener slash reader wants to get answered. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Profit First? Yeah, so um, it was tough. I, after selling it, my second company, I thought I knew the formula to success. So I, I sold my first one to uh, private equity, my second to a Fortune 500, and I'm like, whoa, I got the Midas touch, man, and became full of myself. I mean, truly, a deck. Like, I, can't, I can't think of any other word. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna become an angel investor now, and I took my own money, started 10 companies, and was just throwing money into these businesses, believing that the only thing that mattered was that I was involved. And it was a, it was a train wreck. It was, I didn't know what I was doing. I was horrible at it. And I lost basically every penny at, uh, at it. And the day I lost my last penny became a defining moment for me in, in the realization that what I thought was the formula of success, it takes money to make money that what I have done in the past was the way that's going to be the way of the future uh, was horribly wrong. I thought that profit was an event, you, you know, grow fast, sell your company, pump and dump. And I came to realize that profit is not an event, it's something else. It's a habit. So what makes this book different from others regarding the same topic? I, I challenge every book that's come before it in that Every book I've read to this point has talked about what's called gap accounting. It stands for generally accepted accounting principles. It's the formula that's been around forever. And businesses base their profitability on this. And, and how it works is sales minus expenses equals profit. That's the foundational formula. Sell as much as you can, subtract the expenses from it, and the result is profit. And I challenge that formula and say it's totally flawed because profit is a leftover. It's the afterthought. And the way our minds work, the way human behavior is, it's the worst formula. So I propose a new formula, which is sales minus profit equals expenses. Sell as much as you can. Extract your profit from your business first before you pay a single bill. Tuck away that profit. And then pay your expenses with the remainder. It changes the entire paradigm. So I, I think, I hope it's a paradigm-shifting book. Now, that being said, this is the pay yourself first principle, a principle that's been around for a very long time, but always applied to our personal life. I believe Profit First is the first book that's ever said that pay yourself first principle now applies to business. And how would you want the reader to engage with this book? Is this the kind of book that they should jump in and out of or that they should read from beginning to end? This is a beginning to end book. Every book I write is that way. You, 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 start, uh, you start in the beginning, and there's action steps at the end of each chapter. And these action steps are you know, highly, highly applicable to the next stage. So at the end of chapter one, it says, okay, call your bank and do these three things. And if you don't do these three things, when you finish chapter two, uh, you're, you're going to have to rewind back to chapter one and get started again. So you have to read it 
beginning to end. You can do it over any time frame. If you're an intense reader and you get it done in three, four days, that's awesome. If it takes you three or four months or a year, it still works. This book, like Pumpkin Plan, we talked about yesterday, this book is also front loaded. So I actually lay out the entire formula, I mean, the entire system within three chapters. So you can do everything. Then the remaining chapters, while they all have action steps, they are the advanced applications of it. So I have readers, I got another email today. Someone said, just started your book. Holy cow, it's having an impact already. I'm doing profit first. Uh, And I love hearing stuff like that. (laughs) That's huge. Yeah, it's great. All right. So we're to, again, my favorite part of the entire interview, and that's where I'm going to hand over the mic, uh, <laughs> like we've discussed and, and, uh, and let you basically take a deep dive into your newest creation. Yeah. So the, basically I go over the, the core principles of profit first. And what I found was that in the fitness industry, in the health industry that, or diet industry, there's, there's four core principles and found that these translated into a uh, healthy business too. So here's what they are. First is that dietitian, dietitians found that we need to take less t- calories in. Unfortunately, in America, actually globally now, that more and more people are becoming obese. So, and we all know this. They said, but going on diets or trying that uh, you know ab thing that electrocutes you every 10 seconds, like that stuff doesn't work. Even like P90X, this great intense program doesn't work because it's not sustainable. It doesn't work with our existing habits. So a lot of these people make change, but then go back to the way they were. But there's been one way they found this very successful. And it's really simple. Change the size of the plates at your house. Throw out all those old ones, put in new ones. By getting smaller plates, you now get to leverage your habits. You continue to behave the same way. So you still fill up a plate like you always have, but since it's a smaller plate, less calories, you eat less, and that little change has a huge impact. Well, in our business, we have to realize that we have one massive plate. It's called the checking account. All our money goes in there. Our bills get paid out of this one account, at least for most businesses. The strategic step we need to make is have multiple small plates. Reduce the size of that account for expenses. So there's less money sitting there. Spread that money that comes out into a profit account, to a tax account, to your own pay, owner's pay, and to an expense account. And by spreading out these smaller plates, you see that less is available and then you consume less for expenses and you pre-allocate a profit. The second step I learned was um, to eat your vegetables first. So in the health industry, they find that most people eat all their food simultaneously. Vegetables are served with steak and, and whatever. Chances are, in that case, we'll eat the steak first and the vegetables get pushed aside, never to be eaten. They said, if we simply eat our vegetables first, we'll get the nutrients and vitamins from it, and then we'll be able to uh, take on, when, when we eat our steak, we'll take in less calories. Well, in our business, do the same thing. When money comes into our accounts, the very first step is the vegetables, spreading the money out to these different plates, reserving the profit, reserving money to pay your tax responsibilities, reserving money to pay yourself. Most owners don't even pay themselves enough. And then the leftover is used to pay expenses. And with less money for expenses, uh, you're more likely to spend less on expenses. The third step is to remove temptation. In the health industry, if you, know, if you like soda, they say the best thing to do is not have any soda in your house. You're less likely to eat it or drink it. Well, in business, when we have our profit reserved, the first step is to take that profit, transfer it to a second bank, remove it from our existing bank. So once we allocate money for profit, if it just sits there, that day's going to come, we can't pay our bills, we'll want to borrow from our profit account and we'll get in trouble. So take that money transfer it to another party, another bank perhaps that you don't have easy access to, you don't have those convenience options, and now with the profit removed, you're less likely to borrow or steal from yourself. You're going to feel more pressure to cut your expenses and make sure your expenses fit in with the the amount of money that's left over for that purpose. And then the final step they teach in the health industry is our eating frequency. Most people eat too infrequently, and so what they teach us in the the industry with... uh, in the fitness industry is to get a rhythm, eat five meals a day is actually the optimal five small meals instead of trying to have three when we in fact have two. Um, other times people are constantly snacking. They said, no, don't do that either. Have five small meals a day. So you never get you know, into starvation mode. When our business, 
most of us, when it comes to paying bills and managing our money, we do it, you know, deposit comes in, we see what we can pay. And it's, it's every day, it's back and forth. It's that constant snacking, if you will. Or other times the bills just pile up, pile up, pile up. We wait, it's the end of the month, the, the fifth collection calls come in and then we say, okay, I'm going to pay all my bills. And we go through and we pay what we can. That's a gorging. It doesn't work either. Uh, establish a rhythm of going through this process of, of paying bills, allocating this money, doing those things about twice a month. And if you do that, what happens is you see money come in, it piles up in, as an income, then you allocate, pay your bills, and then all the, you know, the income's gone now because you've has been allocated, and you let the money accumulate again, and then you allocate, pay bills, take your profit, and so forth. If you do this twice a month, it starts becoming like waves in the ocean. You guys start seeing a rhythm, and if the waves start getting bigger, that's a sign that you know, things are getting good. Um, maybe collections are improving. It's, it's, you'll, you'll be aware of it. Conversely, if the waves are getting smaller, you'll be very aware of it, but you'll be able to pick trends. So that's, that's the hyper fast core essence of profit first. Spike, you just took us through a ton of great information and with a ton of value and, and context. And, and, uh, uh, this next question is really about breaking that down even further. And if the reader can only take away one concept, principle or action item out of your entire book, what would you choose that to be? Yeah, hands down, it's flipping the formula. So the formula of sales minus expenses equals profit. The formula we've all been told is busted. It's broken. It's a lie. It hurts your business. It does not result in profit. And the proof is in almost every business I've ever met. I said, do you follow this formula? Sales minus expenses equals profit. And they say, yeah. And I say, how much profit do you have every year? And they're like, uh, none. I'm like, well, guess what? The problem ain't you. That formula sucks. What I want people to take home is this new formula, sales minus profit equals expenses. Take your profit first, a predetermined percentage, 5, 10, 15, maybe even 20%. If you're real healthy, it may take time to get there, but take a percentage, starting immediately, take a percentage over time, try to build it up. But by taking your profit first, less money is available for expenses, your behavior will change, and you'll find ways to get the same things done with less money. Mm. That's huge. And I just pulled a quote out of that, so... <laughs> this next Yo, question, good. do you have a favorite quote from this book? Uh, this is what I inscribe every book uh, with. Now I say, take your profit first, always. Th- that is, the, it's the theme. That's why I made the title of the book, profit first, profit first. I can't, I can't drive that home enough. And when people, entrepreneurs, the, my readers, when they get that concept of taking the profit first, they adjust their behavior and everything changes and their businesses become profitable. And the funny thing is like this, they say, well, you can't guarantee it. I, I guarantee it works. If you can take your profit first and never take away or borrow from your profit, of course you'll be profitable. You have to be. The challenge isn't the system. The system just works. The challenge isn't doing it. I can't guarantee people will stick with it. If you can't stick with it, that's where it falls apart. So this is definitely, we talk about paradigm shifts. That for, for the majority of people, this is definitely going to be a paradigm shift. And that does lead into our, our, our last question. That is what's another book you've read that is, has had a huge impact or, or created a paradigm shift for you? Paradigm shift, probably the spider and the starfish, or maybe it's called the starfish and the spider. Now I don't remember the sequence of it. And I don't even know who wrote this, this book. I read about two, three years ago, a really interesting paradigm shift of how business historically has been like a spider. There's a head with all these legs, but if you destroy the head, everything dies. The starfish represents how an organization, like a starfish, you can cut off its head, so to speak, or cut all five legs off and they all form new starfish. That business today has to be leaderless AKA everyone's a leader and that should someone no longer um, be leading the organization that it will continue on unabated. Perfect example is Wikipedia. It's contributed to by everyone. If any one person leaves, if a leader fades out, it continues on. Mm, That's huge. And I looked it up. You were right. It's the starfish and the spider. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And we'll have that in the show notes. So that's perfect. Well, Mike, now I'm kind of sad because we're, we've come to an end of, of Mike Michalowicz week. Yeah. <laughs> Mike yeah. Michalowicz week is, is now over, but I already, I already feel like we haven't talked about it, but I feel like there's, there's books coming in the future. So I think that, uh, uh, I'm excited to have, I, I, this is not goodbye forever. This will be uh goodbye for now until the next book. But Mike, before we depart, can you recommend the best way for our listeners to get more information on you and your newest book, Profit First? Sure. Um, so my 
my uh, best place to go is my website, which is mikemichalowitz.com. Free resources, anything you want to download is there. Uh, there's chapters from all these books, including Profit First and my other books. So go to mikemichalowitz.com. Also, I encourage anyone to subscribe to. Uh, there's a newsletter where I share articles I wrote for the Wall Street Journal. Tons of other resources and stuff I've written, too, that you get there. And if you want to get the books, the best place, quite frankly, is Amazon. They got the best price going on. And and Profit First is on Kindle Unlimited now. So you can even get the book for free if you're a subscriber to Kindle Unlimited. Excellent. And, Mike, I think I, I talked a little bit with you about this, but we're actually going to be giving away all three books each day that we actually run. So this will run, like, on a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. And, and we're <laughs> so actually – We'll be uh, uh, sending those out. So someone could actually win, uh, and I'll get more further details out on the actual contest, but all three of them, um, they have a chance to win basically each day that this airs. So it would be like a Monday, a Wednesday. Or I'm sorry, a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And uh, so they'll have a chance to do that. But thank you so much for coming on. I, I, I enjoyed all of these interviews immensely. And I think mainly, just like your books, in the same way you are, um, it's so real so authentic, so transparent. I mean, even, you know, like you said about in the, when you were talking about what was the inspiration behind this book, um, you know, a well, lot of people, it, when I said I, it was being a dick. Yes. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and then took us through the, the full story of, of, uh, you know, how you got a big head and all this different kind of stuff. Some people that that's, that's tough to talk about. And you, it just seems like, yeah. Hey, I'm going to tell you exactly like it is. Cause I think I can help you by, by my story. Well, not thank by, you sugarcoating it. So I, I appreciate that. That's, that's how I work. I, when I talk to myself in my head, I think some people's self-talk is very nice and mine is very straightforward and Hey, you know, don't be a dummy or don't be a. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Case, so. Yeah. Don't be. And unfortunately, you know, for me, I had to go through that yeah. to have this awareness. I, I had no idea when, while I was being a, that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And in retrospect, it's like, Oh my God, I mean, total tool and just believing myself, uh, my ego. And, uh, I, I'm not, fixed. I'm not perfect now, but it has given me this awareness that when I believe something to be true, is it really, it's just changed my, my perspective. So I'm, I'm very grateful for that period of my life. It was yeah. horribly painful, but grateful. Well, perfect. Well, Mike, thank you so much for coming on. And I look forward with, to uh, speaking with you in the future. Ditto, man. Thanks for this, Wade. I appreciate it. Thanks again for listening in today. If you would like to get your hands on Profit First or any of the other resources mentioned by Mike, just look at the show notes at the elpodcast.com. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.